So, I popped into High House Insurance to see if they could quote for my house insurance rather than using the internet. High House got a great deal. So, to celebrate, I bought a posh hairdo. It made me look beautiful, gorgeous enough to become a highly paid model. I then won Celebrity Big Brother. I had an affair with an MP. Now, I'm promoting a doll of me that says, Cool, blimey, you're well fit. <laughs> Happy things happen when you talk face to face with High House Insurance. See if we can beat your home insurance quote from the internet. Find us on the High Street Selsey or call 606 552. Hello and a warm welcome to Manhood Internet Radio. I'm Tony Weiner, your host for this show. So, what do we have on offer for you? Well, we start the show with Alison's roundup of things to do in the area, and that will be followed by answers to the last quiz. Our Keith has been let out of the studio again and is talking to some very interesting businesses. He then rushes back to give us another great recipe. So, let's get going, and it's over to Alison for a roundup of what's on in the area. Hello there and welcome once again to our weekly look at what's on in Selsey and also the west of the Manhood Peninsula. So let's kick off today on Wednesday the 26th of October it's time for the Community Gala Awards Evening and that will take place at the Selsey Centre. I don't have any more details about that but if you'd like to ring the centre I'm sure they'd be able to tell you what's happening. Also on Wednesday the Selsey Cinema Club are running a free afternoon. This is ready for Halloween, they're showing the Adams Family, that's at two o'clock and it's free. On Thursday, another half term activity, this time at Pagham Harbour. It's time for Wild Families, Halloween Beasties and Crafts. That's being held at the Visitor Centre. You can discover some of our mini beasts who have a darker side and also you can create your own wild monsters. That will begin at 10.30 in the morning likely to take about two hours. The cost for that is £3 per child or if they're a wildlife explorer member then that goes down to £2. For the older members of the community the Venture Club are making a trip to Haskins Garden Centre. They'll be leaving at nine o'clock in the morning and returning at 2.30. There's an optional carvery lunch available at the High Down Hotel the cost for that will be £6.50 per person. If you're interested in going, you need to phone the Venture Club office. Their number is 605-115. That's 605-115. On the same day, Thursday the 27th, the children are having a Halloween party at Selsey Football Club between 6 o'clock and 7.30 in the evening. The cost for that is £4 per child, which has to be pre-booked and paid for or if you turn up on the door that will go up to five pounds per child the ticket price includes a hot dog on friday the 28th of october it's time for the u3a monthly meeting they meet at the selsey center at 2 30 in the afternoon their speaker this month is hillary sterling and she'll be talking about josiah wedgwood now later on in the evening on friday there's an astronomy night at pagham harbour at the visitor center this will be an evening in the company of Ian Sharp, who's one of the UK's leading amateur astronomers. And also there will be the BBC The Sky at Night's Pete Lawrence. If you want to learn how to recognise the autumn constellations, understand the cosmos and how we fit in and view deep space objects through quality telescopes, then this is the evening for you. That's quite a tall order, isn't it? Between 7 and 8.30 in the evening, the cost for that is £16 per person or if you're an RSPB member, then that will go down to £12. As usual with the RSPB meetings, booking is essential. You need to phone 641 508. That's 641 508. On Saturday the 29th of October, the Selsey Community Gala Awards will continue with a gala event also to be held at the Selsey Centre. There's a children's Halloween party taking place at the Crown Inn on the High Street. That will be held from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock. They're going to have a bouncy castle, face painting, best dressed competition, toffee apples and a children's buffet at £2 per head together with a colouring competition and a lucky dip. So plenty going on there at the Crown between 12 and 3. Later in the evening, it's disco night at the Royal British Legion on the High Street. 
And also that evening, there's going to be a Halloween fancy dress party at the Celsi Club on Cox's Road. There's a buffet and a disco with DJ Macca and entry to that is free. It begins at 8 o'clock in the evening. A little bit earlier on, on Saturday, East Beach Evangelical Church are holding a French night. That will begin at 6 o'clock in the evening. They're offering games, a quiz, a French buffet and an insight into 25 years of life in France by Steve Cox. He's the former pastor of the church. Now don't forget also on Saturday that the clocks go back for an hour so make sure you set your clocks up properly before you go to bed. And then on Sunday the next day there's another children's Halloween party. This one's going to be held at the Legion. On Monday the 31st of October the Movies for Memories will be meeting. They're going to show Pillow Talk so that takes us right back doesn't it? That will be held at one o'clock in the Town Hall and the Order for the day is lunch and then a film. That's open to senior citizens, but you do have to book. The number for that is 201 616, or you can pop down to the Selsey Information Exchange where you can uh, order your tickets there. That will be sponsored by High House Insurance. Let's have a look at the weather now before we move over to Bracklesham and see what's happening over there. On Wednesday, we can expect light cloud and 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit with an 11 mile per hour westerly wind. Now the temperatures are not likely to change very much in the week, dropping down to Thursday at 14 degrees Celsius or 57 Fahrenheit, again light cloud, slightly less wind, 8 miles an hour and that's a southwesterly. Friday, same sort of temperatures, same light cloud, same wind speed, but this is the opposite direction. It's going to be a southeasterly on Friday. Saturday, same sort of weather pattern, light cloud, 57 Fahrenheit, 14 degrees C and an 8 miles per hour wind, moving around south southeasterly on Saturday. Sunday again, light cloud, 14 degrees or 57 Fahrenheit, 8 miles an hour, wind this time east southeasterly. But on Monday we have a change. Monday it promises to be a sunny day, slightly higher on the temperature, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius and an east northeasterly wind. And the tide times for the week, beginning on Wednesday the 26th with a low at 5 past 12 and a high at 10 to 7 in the evening. And then changing of course in the week, finishing on Tuesday the 1st with a high tide at a quarter to 12 and a low tide at 20 to 6. Now let's move across the peninsula and see what's happening at Bracklesham and the Witterings. On Wednesday the 26th of October, it will be time for a table tennis drop in and play, that's for the adults, at the barn, 12, at the barn from 10 until 12. Also that morning, CBT motorcycle training at the barn from 9 until 11, followed by Gyrokensis with Jen. She'll be doing that from 11 until 12. Then after lunch, belly dancing with Step Inside from 1 until 2, followed by short mat bowls from 2 until 4. So that should take most of the day. And if you've still got any energy left, what about Zumba with Louise at the barn from 6.30 until 7.30? There's line dancing at the Legion from 7 until 9 and it's happy hour at Pond Barn between 5 and 8. Then on Thursday the 27th it will be time for Busy, Bigs, Busy Bugs Toddler Gym. They'll be meeting from 9.15 until 12.15. There's a Keep Fit class at East Wittering Village Hall between 2 and 3. And don't forget it's Stitch and Yarn at the Witterings Medical Centre between 10.30 and 12.30. At more or less the same time, it's Knit and Natter at East Wittering Library. That meets from 11 until 12.30. It's also time for the West Witterings Master Art Group between 10 and 12. They meet at the Memorial Hall. And there'll be short mat bowls at West Wittering. Three sessions there, 10 till 12, 2 till 4 and 7 till 9.30 in the evening. Now that's held at West Wittering Memorial Hall. The person to talk to about those sessions is Maggie. You can speak to her on 673 231. That's 673 231. 
On Friday the 28th, we'll be having Baby Sing and Sign at the barn between 9.45 and 11.45. And then in the afternoon, it's short mat bowls again between 2 and 4. Later on on Friday, it will be jukebox night at Pond Barn between 7 and midnight. Again, don't forget the clocks will be changing Saturday night. Ready for Sunday morning at the barn with Windrush Church will be meeting between 10.30 and 12.45. In the evening, there's a quiz night at Pond Barn. That starts at 8 o'clock in the evening. Then our events for the next week. Little Ducklings Mother and Toddler Group meet on Monday at Bracklesham Barn, 9.30 until 11.30. Also, there'll be short mat bowls between 11.30 and 1 o'clock and yoga with Elaine. She's doing that from 7 until 8.30. If you have any energy left, why not try ARO Ladies Beginner Kickboxing? Verity will be doing that. She'll be doing it from 7.30 until 8.30 in the evening. So that just about sums up what's going on over half term. Plenty to keep you busy. Hope you enjoy all those events and I'll speak to you again next week. Bye for now. Thank you, that should keep us busy. Now over to Keith for answers to the last brain teaser. Right, it's time for last week's quiz answers. And Kevin asked us, who, did, who was Joyce Grenfell speaking to when she said, don't do that, in one of her famous monologues? Number two, Dr Watson was Sherlock Holmes's best buddy, but what was Dr Watson's first name? Which famous comedian supposedly ate someone's hamster, according to The Sun. Which famous sports star died of liver disease in 2005? And what kind of creature is a ladybird? And the answers are... Joyce Grenfell was talking to George, young George. George, don't do that. Dr Watson's surname... Well, his surname, of course, was Watson, but his Christian name was John. And according to the Sun newspaper, Freddie Starr at my hamster. Not my hamster, personally, but that was the headline. And sadly, it was George Best that died from liver failure in 2005. And a ladybird is, of course, a beetle. And the connection is the Beatles. George, John, Ringo Starr. And I think Kevin's thrown you a bit of a curveball with this one, because... It was Pete Best as well that he'd included, and not Paul McCartney. So uh, you can argue that one with Kevin. I'll tell you where to find him. Well, thanks uh, once again for that, Kevin, and we look forward to next week's. Thank you. Keith has been out and about in Selsey High Street, and we find him first talking to Melanie Brown, who runs a very unusual business. All right, with me now, I've got Melanie Brown. And Mel is the owner, and she runs Mel's Healing Sanctuary. Now, more than that, I do not know. But Mel's going to uh, fill us in on what she does and tell us a little bit about her gift. Good morning, Mel. Good morning. Now, tell us about your gift and about Mel's Healing Sanctuary. Mel's Healing Sanctuary started in May of this year. Um, I hire a room in a beauty salon called Beautiful 2 in Salesy High Street. And I do quite a bit of advertising and things to try and get my customers to come in. Uh, my gift is that I work with spirit. I can do spiritual healing. I do card reading and I do one-to-one -one readings. Spiritual healing is where I connect up to spirit and they send an energy through me. Um, it's a bit like an electricity running through me and I get extremely warm. The person who has come in to receive healing can either lay on the couch or they can sit in a chair. Um, if it's okay with them, I place my hands on them and the electricity runs through me and into them, helping them to relax. Majority of my customers tend to fall asleep on me, um, which obviously means I've done a good job because they're obviously really relaxed. If you have aches and pains, then I can help to alleviate those aches and pains. I can't heal you, can't take away the pain completely, but I can alleviate it for probably a week, um, which obviously is a big help when you're in constant pain. The uh, card readings are where you come in. I work with oracle cards. 
the oracle cards I pass to you, you give them a shuffle to put your energy onto the oracle card and then they are spread out on the table and you choose a card that you are drawn to and you will find yourself drawn to specific cards and you pick up the first card, I read that card with what the picture is and what the words are on it and then spirit will give me some more information to pass on to you and then we draw another card and eventually you have six cards in total sometimes it will give you information of your past life and present life occasionally it will give you things that are coming up but not very often as we don't tend to predict things that's more towards fortune telling rather than working with spirit with the one-to-one -one readings we connect up to spirit and your one of your loved ones or more will come in and I will be able to sense them in the room sometimes I can actually describe what they look like I don't see them I just sense them but I can explain what they look like if they come close enough to me and they will pass information through me for you to help you to realize that there is still a life after death that they are still around you they haven't really gone anywhere they are still there to help you and support you and to show that they still love you I have to say I'm, I'm a great skeptic about this um, I'm not particularly a religious person anyway right um, but I do believe in faith yes now I believe that if you believe in Mickey Mouse strong enough it'll work for you and, yes. and uh, you know and the mind can do amazing <coughs> things and it might cure Tracy's cough actually <laughs> as well. but um, the mind can do wonderful things but as I say I'm, I'm a tremendous skeptic and, and I guess a lot of people are they are yes so uh, when, when you actually get somebody come to you for the first time are they usually wary or maybe a little bit frightened um, some people are um, I think they expect things to go flying around the room or for me to make them levitate or something like that. Um, but <laughs> you no, never work out levitating. We, we don't sure. do things like that. I and mean, we try not to frighten people. Um, hopefully they come in and I can put them at ease before I actually do anything with them. Um, we just generally have a talk first, you know, just to put them at ease, offer them some coffee and... Um, just generally have a bit of a natter first before we start to do it. But majority of the people that come in are already aware of what it's all about. Mm, mm. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of people, and I probably would include myself in that, are a little bit frightened by it all. A little yes. bit, you know, worried maybe to find out that there is an afterlife. Um, and, you know, if I was convinced that was an after, uh, uh, you know, there was an afterlife. I might be a bit more, uh, you know, I might take a different attitude to the way I perform in this life. Yes, definitely. Um, and, and I think I can see that would change people uh, if they, if they became convinced that, uh, that, you know, that there was an afterlife, there was a spirit world, that they might behave differently in this life, maybe to ensure that they had a better, better time up there, better time afterwards. Yes. Know. I mean, I've, I've recently lost my dad. <clears throat> um, as I say, I'm, I'm a skeptic. I don't believe in any, uh, that at all. But I was a skeptic when it came to hypnotherapy and hypnotism. And yes. I know that works because it made me pack up smoking and I was smoking 20 cigars a day. So I know that that yeah. can work. But that's the power of the mind. Yes. That's, that's somebody getting your mind in the right place and is this what you actually do get get people's minds in the right place so no they... i actually give them evidence that i have got their loved one because i can't possibly know never probably met this person before um but i can tell them things about their life things that have happened i can describe what their loved one looks like a lot of the time um and how would i know that unless i can actually see or sense that person around me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you couldn't, but, but people have seen so much of this sort of stuff over the years that they tend to, and, and they see it on stage. And if it's on stage, it's usually a show of some description. Yes. And it's usually illusions of some description. It is. Um, but it, 
obviously, you know, you, you don't do that. You know, no. you, you're not there to, to put on a show. You're there to actually... I'm there to try and help people, to help, help people come to terms with the fact that they've lost a loved one and that they haven't gone. They're only just on the other side of the veil. They haven't gone at all. They're still around. They still know what you're doing. They, they're still in your lives. See, my, my questions for this, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be awkward and fine. No, that's fine. Difficult questions. But there are questions that people, listen, w- would ask, you know. <clears throat> and one of those is, does the spirit world only work for humans? Because, you know, you wouldn't think of contacting your, your dog or you wouldn't think of contacting a cow. We um, can bring dogs and cats and all sorts through as well. Really? Yes, obviously we can't talk to them, but we no, can no. describe what sort of dog we've got, what size it is, what colour it is. So, yes, we can bring through your pets as well as your relatives. Now, you've got me worried now because <laughs> <laughs> because you seem like a very sensible lady. You don't seem at all insane. And I yet, you know, <laughs> but no, but I mean, most people think that people that are involved with the spirit world are, you know, Perhaps not quite right somewhere. Oh yeah. Um, but you strike me as being quite right everywhere. So. Oh, my family think I'm completely bonkers because I <laughs> talk to the dead. <laughs> I talk to dead people. Is what my son says. Oh right. Yeah. I mean, you know, have you got a young family or are they? Are they a bit no, older they're now? all mid to late twenties now. All oh, right. So they, they, how do they take it? I mean, do they just say, "Well, it's what you do." Get they on just with let it. me get on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's extremely interesting. As I say, for me, also a little bit frightening because I've had experiences throughout my life that I couldn't explain, you know, to do with the spirit world. But I, t- I just tend to say, oh, it's rubbish. And, and, yeah. But Every obviously, people do. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Until you can have it proven to you, a lot of people do. And even a lot of people that have passed over have gone over thinking, well, when I'm dead, I'm dead. Hmm. But they actually come back and say, well, we thought that when you were dead, you were dead. But actually, I'm here and I'm talking to you, so I can't be. It's amazing. I don't know what, I don't know what to say. It's, the it's, only it's part incredible. of you that passes is your outer shell. We borrow these outer shells while we're on this planet so that we look in human form. But we are all, we're all from spirit and we are all spirit. And we all go back to being spirit. Well, I wish I'd have borrowed a better one. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> and there we go with that. Well, thanks ever so much for coming in, just, just explaining uh, a little bit about it to us. Is there, is there anything else you do, um, you know, with regards to spirit world? I mean, if people want, obviously now, if they want to contact a, a loved one that's passed on, uh, they just got to come yeah, they, and see you. And all they've got to do is to um, ring the salon and book in. And the salon is in Selsey. It's in Selsey. Selsey yes. Street. And the phone number? It's 01243 606 222. 606 222. 01243 yes. 606 Yeah. And the chances are, of course, Mel's going to know that you're going to be phoning <laughs> before you phone. Well, thanks once again, Mel, for coming okay, in. I thank know you, you, very were, much. you were probably as frightened of being interviewed for this as I was <laughs> asking the questions. But um, yes. it's, it's opened my eyes a little bit, certainly. And uh, I'm sure you'll have people now pouring through the door because you don't look crackers at all. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully Keith has had time to run along to Aston's to talk about a subject important to many people. Right, my next guest today is John Sandbrook from Aston's. Sorry, John, did you forget your name there? It's all right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, John Sandbrook from Aston's. And John's going to uh, just update us a bit about the way the property situation is uh, in the area now, because I do know that uh, properties seem to be coming on the market and going off the market very, very quickly. Um, so it looks like it's a seller's market at the moment. So, John, how's it looking out there? Well, thanks, Keith. Um, really, I think Brexit is the uh, issue, recent issue that's uh, perhaps had an impact on the property market. In the first half of this year, um, as you've just indicated, um, you know, you put a property on the market at the right price and it would be gone in 48 hours. After Brexit, immediately after Brexit, that changed a little bit. Um, I think people were a bit nervous and lacking confidence, not sure what the vote to leave the EU would actually mean in terms of property values. Um, And we did find that um, 
uh, there was a, a continued short supply of property and of course that means that when something comes on the market it goes very quickly. Um, vendors seem to be holding back a little bit from instructing agents. Um, also of course uh, this area of the peninsula um, is very closely associated with the London market because we get a lot of people who are buying second homes here or who are relocating to this area from the greater London area. Mm. And if the London market suffers a bit, then that ripples out and affects the peninsula a little bit. Um, however, the good news is that over the last month, things are improving without a doubt. Uh, agents, including us, are doing a lot more market appraisals or valuations, if you like, um, and being instructed on a lot more property. Um, and the fears about what Brexit might bring about for the country seem to have uh, disappeared to some extent so I far mean, as the local people property just don't market. Care now, don't well, <laughs> it's, maybe, it's, it's, that's typical maybe. British. But um, we we'll worry getting, about it initially, and then after that, well, who cares? Without getting too political, you know, we're not in World War Three yet, and the economy hasn't collapsed as much as some people would have us believe. So I think confidence is returning uh, to the market, um, uh, and. Uh, Hopefully that will continue. Um, one thing to note is that this, this area is still very, very popular. And whilst overall nationally for England and Wales, um, price increases over the last 12 months have gone up by just about 4%, 4.5%, which is not that great. Um, in this part of the world, uh, prices are still going up at anything between 7 and 8% a year. So, you know, the demand is there and it's, it's frustrating, I think, really, both for buyers and for local estate agents that we can't get enough property on the market um, as much as we would like to satisfy that demand. I mean, I do know from so. personal experience because my son's been looking to move down here and um, the, there just doesn't seem to be any property about. No. Know, uh, th there are certain types of property about but, but which doesn't suit you know, his needs, which is a sort of standard three-bedroom semi or end of terrace or whatever yeah <clears throat> but um it just seems to be such a shortage of it yeah. if you look in the windows of estate agents it's the same property that was in there three or four weeks ago absolutely There's yes. very little yeah. new stuff coming in or seems to be very little new yeah. stuff coming in yeah um, we try to address this to encourage um vendors to instruct us we we uh, as your listeners may know we have an office in east wittering and also in selsey we are well known also for lettings as well as sales and we've recently acquired a, a management portfolio in Bognor uh, Regis. So we can now offer both um, a sales uh, and lettings uh, facility, if you like, to the entire Manhood uh, Peninsula, stretching over and including uh, Bognor Regis as well. Um, and to try to attract new sellers and new landlord um, uh, owners, um, we do offer a variety of incentives. Um, commercially, we don't want to offer it, but practically, we have to. Have to. <laughs> so, um, so for example, in Selsey, if you want to instruct us to sell a house, um, we presently would charge you just um, uh, three quarters of 1%, 0.75% uh, commission, which includes VAT. So the actual commission payment is uh, just over 0.6%. Um, that strikes if, me as uh, being remarkably good value. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> because I thought I was doing well because I just had to put my dad's uh, passed away and I had to put his house on the market. Not in this area, I yeah. isn't to add. Um, but the best I could get was 1%. Yes, uh, yeah. So, so that sounds very good to me. Um, we also offer a, a fixed fee, a, a reduced fixed fee, uh, where somebody is perhaps selling a property. You mentioned your father. Somebody is acting as an executor uh, and selling a property um, for the estate. Uh, where we will charge a, a fixed fee um, and also people that are selling because they're moving into a care home um, and so on. And the reason we can charge a reduced fee is there's no forward chain, as mm. an estate agent yeah. calls it. You know, it's simply selling uh, an empty property generally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, we, we can provide more details at either of our offices about those uh, fixed fees. Interestingly, what's good is that because of our letting experience, we have many contacts with contractors who we use on a regular basis to manage uh, and, and you know sort out problems on, on properties that are let. Um, and we, are, we can include those services for free um, where somebody's selling on behalf of an estate or is moving to a care home. Mm. So if somebody perhaps 
Well, we find a lot of executives live out of the area. So, you know, if we have a bungalow in East Wittering uh, that's being sold subject to probate, it may well be the executor lives in London or the Midlands or anywhere um, and really hasn't got the time or perhaps the inclination to come down and make sure the property is secure, to cut the grass, to attend to any it's minor a reverse issues. reverse situation for me. Yeah. <laughs> my dad lived in Windsor and we have to travel up. Yeah, yeah so I know exactly so it's the, the same. It, it, is a pro it can be a yeah, problem. If, you, if you're leaving um, a property empty, there's all sorts of risks. Yeah, um, and we'll provide that service uh, free of charge um, and inclusive within that fixed fee. Um, so it's something to bear in mind, you know. Especially when it comes to it being in probate or, or part of a, a will, because people like to know what they, you know, how much it's going to cost. And, yes. Yeah. And so if it's a fixed fee job, yeah. then they absolutely know from the and, start what it, what's going to be. Absolutely. And those, those, those fixed fees generally, uh, I'm not a solicitor, so I can only put this forward. Generally, I understand that those sort of costs can be offset against the estate for taxation anyway, uh, purposes, you know, mm. so that be deducted from the value of the estate before it's assessed for uh, income or inheritance tax. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not an easy situation no. being an executor of the will. Thankfully, I, it's not me, it's my wife that's got to deal with it. Right. So, uh, but it's, you know, I've seen what she's had to go through to, to do it. And you need, really need as much help as you can get. So yes, if you've yeah. got an estate agent that's, that's been very helpful. Uh, well, it's one of those experiences in life that we all probably face at one time or another, but we don't face it, thankfully, you know, every day, do we? And no, so no. It, it, it tends to be once or twice in our lifetime uh, that we have to uh, act in that way as an executor. Um, so, yeah. Now, is there much property about around this area at the moment? Uh, as I say, I've, I've had a look and I can't Very, find it right very now. little. Um, acute undersupply of, of stock in the Wittering, certainly. Um, a little more availability in Selsey. Um, but, uh, and in Bognor Regis as well. Um, but certainly in the immediate locality where, where I'm based in East Wittering, uh, uh, no, there's very little property coming onto the market at the moment. But I do think that would change because we are, as I said earlier, getting invited out to do more and more, uh, market appraisals, as we call them, um, which is an indicator really that people are thinking of selling or maybe thinking of selling mm. perhaps in the new year rather than, Nobody, yeah, this time of year, it's, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? Nobody people, wants to move on it, Christmas Day, do they? People, I mean, well, that's right. People you know, think, well, if we put a house on the up for sale now, you know, it can take 8, 10, 12 weeks, yeah. whatever. We could be moving Christmas Eve or you know, that sort yes. of time. And, and, and nobody really wants no, to do that. No, not think. at all. Yeah. No. Well, thanks for coming in and uh, letting us know what's going on in the area with regards to how property is and, and what services you can supply because certainly any, anything to do with wills and there's this area of course there's a lot of elderly people yes. myself included <laughs> um and and it, it's reassuring for them to be able to know that you know if, if they want to sell a house because they've got to go into a care home yes and it happens a great deal down here probably more than in a good many areas. Yes. It's, yeah. it's reassuring for them to know that they can go to somebody and say, right, well, I, I need to sell my house. I've got to go into a care home. Can you take care of it? Yeah. And, and, and absolutely. And I think it also gives peace of mind to their, to their relatives, normally their children as well, who maybe, as I say, live out of the area and can't keep a, a day to day eye on things. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, certainly. Yeah. Well, thanks for popping in and, uh, updating us. John, and uh, I'm sure you'll have better news for us next time. Hopefully, the, yeah. The market will be flooded with cheap property. <laughs> you think that's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, just while we're on the subject, do you think the uh, the building of Asda in, in Selsey will affect the market property-wise? I, I think it will have a very positive effect on Selsey. Um, Selsey facilities are a bit limited at the moment, certainly uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, supermarkets and, and so on. Um, so something like Asda, whilst um, I imagine there may be some local resistance to it, but overall, I think it would have a very positive effect on um, people wanting to live in Selsey, which is good. You need the demand uh, and also on property prices, especially those in the immediate area, because you're selling a home with uh, very easy access to a, a very large supermarket. 
Yes, because I, I can see that a lot of people will travel from this area, from Witterings, yeah. across there, because it means they don't have to go north of the A27. Quite right, yes. You know, so in yes. the summer, when we all know how difficult that is, yes. you can shoot through the back way from here yes. and be into sales in very little time, do your shopping, and come back, and you haven't had to go anywhere near the A27. Yeah. So Quite right, yes. Yeah, yeah. I can, no, no, I, can I think it would have a... Generally, those sort of um, infrastructure improvements have a positive effect on property so uh, yeah i think so i can look at the price of my bungalow going through the roof you probably can i Keith, could probably yeah. go to the bahamas or something <laughs> or probably not well thanks once again john okay. and pleasure. um we'll look forward to seeing you Actually. sometime just after christmas perhaps right. and uh, see how we're doing then thanks very much thanks thank very you much. Gosh, Keith is having a busy time, but hopefully he has managed to rush back and we now go over to his kitchen for another of his great recipes. And now, for those of you that, uh, like me, are rather partial to Italian food, mind I'm partial to pretty much any food really, uh, well how about this one for you? Chicken and wild mushroom cannelloni. This will serve four, and this is what we need. Two tablespoons full of olive oil, two garlic cloves crushed, one large onion finely chopped, 225 grams of wild mushrooms sliced, 350 grams of minced chicken, 115 grams of prosciutto diced, 150 ml of marsala wine, 200 grams of canned chopped tomatoes, 1 tablespoonful of shredded basil leaves, fresh ones, 2 tablespoons full of tomato puree, some salt and pepper, 10 to 12 dried cannelloni tubes, some butter for greasing, 625 ml of bechamel sauce. Now, that's a different recipe if you don't know how to make a bechamel sauce. And 85 grams of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And this is what we do. Heat the olive oil in a heavy based frying pan and add the garlic, onion and mushrooms and cook over a low heat, stirring frequently for eight to 10 minutes. Add the ground chicken and prosciutto and cook Stir in frequently for 12 minutes or until it's browned all over. Stir in the marsala and the tomatoes and their juices and the basil and tomato puree and cook for four minutes and season with some salt and pepper. Then cover and simmer for 30 minutes and uncover and stir and simmer for a further 15 minutes. Meanwhile, bring a large heavy base saucepan of lightly salted water to the boil and add the pasta. Return to the boil and cook for 8 to 10 minutes or in tender but still firm to the bite. We don't want it too soft and sloppy. And using a slotted spoon, transfer the cannelloni tubes to a plate and pat dry with paper towels. Now, using a teaspoon, fill the cannelloni tubes with a chicken prosciutto and mushroom mixture and then transfer them to a large, lightly greased ovenproof dish. Pour the bechamel sauce over them to cover completely and sprinkle with the grated parmesan cheese. And bake the cannelloni in a preheated oven at 190 degrees centigrade, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5, for 30 minutes or until golden brown and bubbling and serve at once. Magnifico! Thank you Keith. So before you dash off to test the recipe, it just remains for me to thank all our contributors, including Local Life magazine, our sound editor John Muller, our presenters Alison and Keith, and not forgetting of course our producer John Fletcher. So it's goodbye from me, Tony Weiner. Until next time, bye.